Hi friends, I'm Tammy. Welcome to my channel. And today we are painting this beautiful, light and airy, kind of abstracty floral bouquet. I was inspired to paint this from Kristen Griffin Vanderyat. He's a floral artist to the stars and he has an amazing, inspiring Instagram channel that everything he puts out there with his reels, I just want to paint. All right, let's go ahead and paint. I'm really excited about this bouquet. All right, spraying down our paints. This is the Winsor Newton watercolor palette I've been using. I've got some aqua in here and I've added in some Payne's Gray, which is a blue gray. And we're trying to match up the reference that I am using today. Let me show you. This is by Kristen Griffin Vandriot. He is a floral designer to the stars. And I don't know if that's exactly the correct title, but anyway, that's what we're saying. Uh, that's what I've read. That's what I have heard. And he has wonderful floral designs and his floral arrangements on Instagram, for example, really inspire me. So we're just going to take this kind of grayed down color and we're just going to start kind of blobbing in our paint. We're being very loose. These are hydrangea. We want to leave a lot of white space. And so that we can, you know, play around with things. Uh, if we have just a blob of color, you're not going to see definition of what things are. So I'm just basically I start with some darker in the middle there, start to spread it out with some clean water here and just making it really light and loose and billowy. And now cleaning off my brush even more. And that slightly tinted water is still going to show up with color. But look at how light the edges are here. And I'm really, that's what I'm wanting to go for today. So we have hydrangea here and coming down over here. So we're going to add some more. I've got another large one here and I'm going kind of darker right now. You can kind of do zigzag motions. You can blob or you can just do like these cool marks. And it's darker here, so we're hoping, okay, this is kind of where the next bloom starts and where this one ends. All right, so if it's loose, we're not worried about individual, you know, petals, like what that's going to look like. We can always go back in with a second layer once everything is dry and add in some more, you know, def defini def defined things. Def definition. I was thinking defamation now. So my brain is just going all over the place. But yes, you can define things more as things start to dry. So we have another bloom that's just stemming off from from this group over to its own little group here. And I'm just see I'm just like dabbing this paint around. We have some darker. If I use this part of the brush, the end points where those petals are, are going to be more rounded. If I use this, this one, this way, they're going to be more pointed. So I do like that rounder look. So I can start to angle my brush and give me some more interesting shapes. Clean the brush out. Um, you can do these circular motions too. And, you know, just, just do what you want. Just have fun. You can add some more color back in too, which is always a good time, which I always love. Okay. So we've got some over here. So we'll do them some justice as well, a little bit darker. I do love using a very small amount of color, you know, just a little bit, and then adding in water to spread out. And that's where we're able to achieve just a really lovely, loose floral composition. And we're letting the water do a lot of the work for us, just spreading out that pigment and allowing things to mix in a nice light way. We also have one coming out over here. So we don't want to forget this one. Now hydrangea can be scary, challenging, frustrating, and all the things because it feels complicated. There's just a million petals. What do we do with that? So my solution here is just to paint really light, leave a lot of white space so you can kind of, you know, your brain fills in that there's, you know, different def um, definition between petals. It's not just one giant petal. And, you know, we're just going loosey-goosey today. We're not worried about specifics. I'm also not, you know, I'm not trying to copy this painting. We already have, um, you could take screenshots, which I did, but we have this reel that is already 
a thing. So we don't need to do that. I'm mixing up my purple, just adding in some brightness to what was already on my palette. The Scabiosa, I think I want to add some blue too. And just see where we get with that. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to go with my number eight round. There we go. Guys, this is the part of the video that I just want to remind you to take a deep breath. And if you're painting with me, remind yourself this is supposed to be fun as I'm painting in these pretty little florals. Oh, I want more blue. Let's go for it. I'm just using this beautiful cobalt here I have in my palette. And we're just going to do some little poof balls, dipping in, getting lighter for a scabiosa. Um, taking a breath is going to remind your body to chill out, to relax to not worry about all the end results that you get when you paint. I'll leave a little space to put in kind of a light yellowy color. I just dipped in, squeezed it off the side because, and we're gonna put one in here too, because I wanted some lighter color now. If you have the same value, lightness or darkness, it might not be as an exciting of a painting as it could be. We're gonna do a side facing here, but if you vary it up, Dark colors, light colors, um, you're going to find a lot more beauty in that variety. And that can be really nice to represent. Okay, let's do some more over here. These are going to have some wild stems and it's going to make it come together nicely. All right, I'm grabbing some of this darker pigment here. Let's do a side facing over here. Just like that. Just like so. Another one over here. And then maybe some light ones too. So we're just dipping in the water, squeegeeing off the side and seeing if we can add in some lighter value. See, look at that, really light there. And that's the way we do it, people. Um, let's give a few of them showcases over here too, just for fun. Alrighty, maybe some lighter ones here too. Maybe some front facing, right? So you see petals all the way around, nice yellow center, all the things, and maybe one like this as well. So what I want to do now is start adding our stems. Let's do the vase actually, just kidding. Um, I've got my Payne's Gray here, a lot of water in it. So we're just going to do that. And it's just going to be a simple little vase situation. I like to say we're kind of sketching sketching out the vase, voila, little brush strokes. It's leading to you to where you're going. Guys, I forgot to say, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. What do you like so far? I'm gonna make this wider because I can. What do you like so far about this composition? Is there anything you would like to see me paint in the future? Just curious, let me know in comments. And all the things, we're gonna spread this out now with some water, lovely watery mix. These florals are pretty dry here, so I can just go over there with this wet paintbrush and it's not really gonna disturb what I've painted unless I start scrubbing and kind of moving it around. Then we're gonna have a problem. We don't want that. We want that paint to stay put where it belongs. So here we go, we've got our sketchy little vase sketched out vase. So if you are not sure about your lines, just sketch it. Uh, if you are drawing and sketching, actually drawing and sketching, and this is kind of blending in, we can always go over that later on with more color. But I'm gonna grab some really concentrated paint right now and just drop that in. Look at how pretty. So I'm trying to say is if you're drawing and sketching, um, you know, one of the easiest ways, and we're gonna now clean down brush, clean it, Clean it, dab it, and spread. So one of the easiest ways is to not, you know, commit to that hard line when you're sketching, when you're drawing. You know, don't go whoosh and just draw it in. Just do little ch -ch 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 light marks. And it's going to help you not only to achieve the line work that you want easier, more confidently, but the sketchy look can be really pretty, especially when you're drawing. You can see those pencil marks or charcoal marks, whatever you're using. So this is fun. We're just going to keep spreading this paint around. It's a little different than the original reel, but like I said, we're using it just to inspire us, the basic outlines of things. We're not just copying everything here today. All right, so spreading 
And that's why I like to use reference photos in general. And I just, this guy disappeared, but we can put him back in when everything's dry, if we feel like it. All right, that's the beauty. When you dry and then you put on new layers, all kinds of fun things can happen. All right, a darker base than I did before in the real, I've done this one before, so this is the second time. Just removing some paint, a little highlight, whatevs. Okay, let's start putting in our lovely stems. So I've got a sap green here, I'm just grabbing that. And these are very arched, arched, so they're just like zoop. So we've got that center of the floral. This one has an arched stem as well, so we're just gonna try to pretend we're painting here and then just, just sketchy lines like that, right in there, okay? Can be a little thicker if you want it to be, up to you. So we're gonna do that with the rest of these guys. Just arched, not straight, but arched like that. Alrighty, and then maybe that has a little one there. Can't really see. And then let's see here. This one has a little stem coming out of there. And I'm just trying to make sure that we do this justice. These stems are gorgeous. They are not just these straight stems. So I wanna make sure that they have some movement and some shape. And then we'll do some of these over here too. We can always add more scabiosa as we see fit. If we feel like that's important, if it's missing something, but you can never take out <laughs> the flowers. So I always like to start just, you know, a little bit at a time and then take a look back at my painting and see where are we going? How are we doing? Oh, this guy needs a stem. This happens to me a lot. All right, let's not forget this one. So nice art stem coming in this way. Okay. So take a look at your painting and see what you need to change. If you feel like you need some more purple somewhere, you know, over there, whatever, by all means, add it in. Um, with this reference, there was a lot of purple happening. So I'm just going to add in now another one that we can put a stem in later. And a little more blue, a little more purple. Woo, that's so purple. I definitely need more blue. So that's the beauty of color mixing. You're just kind of trial and error, trying to see what's gonna make sense. I'll do another little one right here too. It's a bit brighter than we had before. Okay, so kind of taking a step back, I do want another one right here. I'm not taking a step back, but I'm just taking a look. And I feel like I'm pretty content with what's happening right now. So I'm excited. And a little stem. That's going to bleed into that. Let it do it. It's watercolor, people. It's what it does. And one right here as well. Okay, for the last thing is you can take a look and see. I've added in these guys. I added in a little stem. See if there's anything else it needs. And if it does, like I'm adding in some blue just to kind of cool this down. And you can, what I'm going to do is take my number two round, my detail brush, and you can just start adding in some fun little marks. And this is going to give... Uh, the dimension, some really nice, pretty details, shadows, texture, whatever you want to call it, for your florals. And you don't have to do this, but it really, it just adds that nice touch. Pop of color, pop of texture, whatever. So now your painting isn't as flat as before. So thick and thin blobs. Don't make them uniform, okay? And, and leave some spaces where you didn't put any because it's just gonna make it more interesting than if everything looked the same. Don't want matchy-matchy, you don't, I promise. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of my lovely bright yellow here just to put in, I'm just using this for the center. It's a bit more intense than the scabiosa in the picture and that's okay. You make it your own and you have fun with it. All right, guys, let me know in comments what you liked most about this video as I'm grabbing some aqua here. It's really intense. This is very opaque. You can see it's very creamy. I love it. But you can kind of go in here and add just a little bit more if you want. Um, I'm not going in painting in little petals, and yet I want to have some pretty marks that tell me, I don't know, there's definition in this painting. And with this tiny little brush, 
It's gonna give me these nice thin marks versus blobs of paint because there's less liquid, you know, less water that's just being distributed on this brush. So as you can see, like it's not, there's no huge rhyme or reason. My biggest thing that I think about when I put in these details is don't be matchy matchy. And so, and that, because that's kind of what my brain wants to do, make everything match, be symmetrical. And that's boring, in my opinion. The eye likes that asymmetry, and which is why I like Kristen's videos so much. His floral design is just very much sprigs of things flying everywhere in such a beautiful and graceful way. And I find, you know, those types of things to be much more appealing than that traditional, you know, vase of florals, the way we've always done it, where you kind of make sure everything is balanced, but in a way that the symmetry is overplayed. So I like it when things are kind of flying all over. That's why I love this so much. And I had to screenshot and I had to show you guys my version of how to do this. So a little bit of blobs here. I hope that makes sense. We're just doing a little bit and I was still like finding myself, you know, wanting to do too much. So we're just going to leave it how it is. We're going to do a little splatter guys, because I do love the splatter. You know that you should know that by now about me. So I've got my aqua, lots of water on the palette and we're just going to splatter the bit twisting your brush so you're not getting a straight line that's uniform and every single little blast of color here. And that is our beautiful hydrangeas and scabiosa. So friends, thank you so much for painting with me today. Make sure if you haven't tried the painting to let me know in comments when you do. And if you did paint it, what your reaction was. I love hearing from you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys soon on the next video.